All right, let's catch up now with a virtual hearing that took place at the Constitutional Court. Uh, today, the public protector, Busisiwe Mkwebane, was seeking a high court, uh, was seeking to overturn a high court ruling uh, that she does not have the power to subpoena tax records from SARS. Mkwebane had attempted, remember, to subpoena former President Jacob Zuma's tax records. To discuss, we're joined by senior legal journalist Karen Mohn. So, uh, you were watching the Constitutional Court uh, virtually today. Uh, quite a thing, Karen. Uh, rem remind us first, however, uh, why the public protector desperately wants uh, the tax records of the former president. Well, what had happened, Francis, was that Musi Mayamani had laid a complaint with Busisiwe Mkwebane over allegations contained in author Jacques Poe's book, The President's Keepers, that the former president, during the first four months of his uh, term in office in 2009, had been receiving a monthly salary of a million rand per month from Royal Security, which is, of course, owned by politically connected businessman Roy Mudley. Um, in the book, there are insinuations that these averments are based on tax information um, and declarations that have been made. So she then began by attempting to subpoena these tax records. SARS told her at the time that they did not believe that she had the legal power to do so. They got a legal opinion in which they said effectively that she would have to go to court to access those records. She then bought a sub subsequent appeal uh, attempt to subpoena Edward Kisveta, the SARS commissioner, and he went to court on an urgent basis to set that subpoena aside, but also to effectively have it declared that SARS cannot provide such information to the public protector absent a court order that they do so. So, so SARS is very cautious, obviously, about giving tax records. It wants to be seen to be reliable with those records. Uh, so, so is this about the courts deciding when it becomes in, in the public interest to do so? Well, effectively, SARS is, as you rightly point out, always contended that you know, if people are aware or taxpayers are aware that their information can just be given to whoever um, without proper processes being followed, it could have a gr profoundly adverse effect on SARS's particular mandate, which is to collect revenue. Um, and they've said that continuously throughout. They say this is a principal issue. It's ju not just about former President Jacob Zuma. It's about the broader implications of this. The public protector, however, says that while the Tax Administration Act does not identify her as a person with whom SARS must share information in certain circumstances, that she has a constitutional mandate to investigate corruption, this kind of malfeasance, and that that mandate should actually ineffectively trump the provisions of the Tax Administration Act. Of course, that is something with which SARS fundamentally disagrees. But one of the most interesting moments about this entire hearing, Francis, was Chief Justice Mukhweng Mukhweng taking significant issue with the fact that in this matter, in addition to fighting against the public protector, um, that in fact the, uh, the court had ordered a personal cost order of 15% against the public protector, saying that he didn't really understand its reasons for doing so and indicating that he couldn't understand the logic of the court in making what he described as a truly extraordinary order against the public mm -hmm. protector. So uh, that possibly looking good for her. Just tell us more about the arguments uh, that were led today. Well, effectively, it's about the public protector contending that, you know, her powers, she, she does believe that she has the powers to subpoena tax records. Um, much of the argument, France, is really centering on this issue around the personal costs order. And um, the court saying, you know, Mahuing in particular, who, of course, was one of the justices who gave a minority ruling in that Reserve Bank case in which Mkwabane was ordered to pay 15 percent of the uh, of the costs of that legal case on her pers in her personal capacity and um, expressing a great deal of disquiet with the with the logic of Judge Peter Mabuse in that ruling. Um, particularly his statements that the, the, the public protector had a sort of proclivity, uh, to, as it were, to flout the law and, and not behave in, in, a, in, a, in an appropriate or legal manner, saying that there was no real basis 
for those particular vermin. So it very much centers that I would be very surprised if the court found against SARS in this matter. I think that it's very likely that they'll find that the public protector, if she wishes to challenge the way in which the Tax Administration Act works, she will need to bring a separate application or bring a separate legal challenge. But it is quite likely that there may be some shift on this personal costs order. Um, of course, we know that there was another personal costs order recently upheld by the Constitutional Court against the public protector when it dismissed her attempt to appeal that very damning uh, series of Estina report judgments which were made against mm. her. All right, so we'll wait for, for the judgment, follow this closely. But staying with the former president, he's saying he won't be appearing before the State uh, Capture Commission. Just, just tell us what's happening there. Well, his lawyer has written to the commission secretary to essentially saying that he's not available on the 21st to the 25th of September, which were the dates that were identified by Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondel for him to appear, giving a number of reasons. But one of the most crucial ones, of course, being that he has concerns over amended regulations, which now allow increased cooperation between the inquiries, investigators and the National Prosecuting Authority, essentially a way to, uh, you know, ease the path of evidence from the inquiry to the NPA so that it can build prosecutions out of them, saying that he was seeking legal counsel on this and that it may well uh, sort of influence his further participation, quote unquote, in this inquiry. Also saying that it was unfair of the inquiry to expect him to go through 30 witness statements while he was preparing for what he's described as the trial of his life, where he is, of course, facing facing charges of corruption with French arms company Thales, also expressing concern about appearing before the commission as an elderly type 2 diabetic who, uh, in his view, is, is COVID vulnerable and not necessarily wanting to expose himself to the risks. Of course, the big outstanding matter is that unresolved application by the inquiry's legal counsel to apply for a subpoena for Jacob Zuma to appear. Um, if that happens, of course, there may well be a situation where he either attempts to challenge such a subpoena in court or simply defies it and faces the possibility of arrest. And surely for health reasons, uh, things like this could be done online. Uh, Karen, very quickly. Je uh, the Deputy Chief Justice has been asked about that in the past, and he's previously said that he's reluctant to allow scenarios in which people are being cross-examined to occur virtually. But if this is a ground that's pursued by Zuma's legal team, there may be some to or fro on that particular issue. But Zondo himself has previously said that ideally he would not allow to do those kind of questioning sessions uh, in a virtual uh, capacity. All right. A great legal update as always. Uh, thank you very much, senior legal journalist Karen Moore.